Welcome to the Rants and Raves podcast. Sure. Out with the bad and in with the good, motherfuckers. That's right. Jessica. Dana. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Welcome to the Rants and Raves podcast. I am Dana Powell. I'm Jessica Young. And, and we, we are, are here, here to, to rant, rant and, and rave. Through the Santa Anna winds. Oh boy, guys. Squeeze Jessica Abedina, cannot see San me. San Bernardino. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica cannot see me. I can see her. So this is a fun game. The Santa Ana wins. We can send people to space, but we cannot overcome wind when it comes to internet. Thrilling information. But Thrilling this is, audio. This is really flying. <laughs> well, also, flying by the, the crazy thing pants. is, the crazy thing is we're talking about this right now. And when I edit and post it, we will both be clear as bell. So <laughs> they're going to be like, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Still trying, still trying. Listen, ay, ay, ay. I'm I'm on the downhill side of life, and the fact that I make this happen at all is a miracle. So, <laughs> listen, we've had some great strides in the last few weeks, and uh, ah, Dana, yes, I have to give a major tip of the hat and a clap, 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 and everything in between uh, for you getting us not only up and running on video. But putting us into the world of TikTok and in Instagram reels, and it's just really helping with our growth. And a lot of people are having fun watching our clips. Um, so thank oh, you, thank yay. you, thank you. Like, I know that is not Thanks, easy, Jess. and uh, you are you are my hero. It is a lot of work. Anyone who does social media, you know, influencers or have their own channels, they they will yep. they will understand. It is. Definitely a lot of work for free, um, yep. but I do love our podcast. And so actually we did an interview for Listen Notes this week. Mm -hmm. uh, if you use that as a search engine, you can find us up there, how we got started, things like that. Uh, yes. So that's very exciting. And I just want to shout out our listeners, especially our regulars. I've sent a couple of you messages thanking you because mm -hmm. you guys listen, you know, everything going on in our lives and you still look and comment on our social media. And honestly... <laughs> That's the best thing you could do for us right now, guys, yeah. for real. It does get our videos out there. One of our videos has almost 800 views, which is like astronomical for a couple of old ladies doing a podcast. <laughs> um, <Exactly. laughs> at least considering the type of exposure that we've had before. We are a yes. self-produced, you know, podcast that literally it's just m me and Jessica, like a mom and her friend trying to figure all this out. Uh, and so... I cannot exactly. express how much we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Yes. Jessica. Yes. How was your week? You've been busy. Hi. You guys, every time I say, but after this week, it should be fun. It just never happens. It may never happen again before uh, the end of <laughs> this lifetime. I don't know. Uh, again, yes. Great for the be busy. Great for the have work. <laughs> Uh, but every time I think, oh, I'm getting a break from this, so blah, blah, blah. It's just not happening, okay? Uh, I'm going to San Diego for the second time in less than seven days again this weekend. <laughs> this is good. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but again, like the travel and when you have other things called life going on and other work. I was back in San Diego this week for a cop job for acting for the state of California police. And then I am going back this weekend teaching at Cornerstone Improv, which is an amazing little offshoot of improv in San Diego. Offshoot, I mean, there are specific theaters. Uh, Finest City is a really nice, well-known improv theater where a lot of friends of ours perform on a regular basis in San Diego. There's lots of places. Um, but Cornerstone was formed to bring people in from all over to teach workshops. And oh. it's wonderful. So I was asked to teach a workshop on genre. I, I've been in a genre prov group. We do Improvised Tennessee Williams yes. for many years. And we used to do yes. 
medical drama and Greek tragedy and Western and all, it was just so fun. But Tennessee Williams was what we landed on over the years and uh, still do at festivals. So I'm going down there to teach a workshop and then they've asked me to perform that night with Bell Rev, which is the San Diego Improvised Tennessee Williams Ensemble. And I oh, love them. I worked with all of them at our Yosemite Camp Improv Utopia with Genre years ago, and they formed a group down there. They're incredible. If you are ever in San Diego, look up Bell Rev. They are fantastic. So I feel honored to get to sit in and play with them after having a workshop with their community. Wow, that sounds fun. Yeah. Very exciting. Trying How about you? you had... <laughs> I just started freaking out because I was like, I, I have nothing to report. <laughs> <laughs> Here's no, what I can report. And this will shock. This will shock no one. Okay. So yesterday I had a very busy day. I dropped my son off at school, had an appointment right after that. And then I did the interview for our podcast. Mm -hmm. I wrote all that out. And then. I worked all day on editing I because, you know, I keep saying I'm working on stuff for Patreon. I really am. It's just not out yet because I want to make sure it's all good and ready. Please. But, um, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. I just don't want to come to the table with nothing. I want to have something to offer you guys. Yes, yes. <laughs> so anyway, I was very busy. And then just out of habit, I was like, oh, I got to go get Henry. And so I go all the way to Burbank from, you know, over here, which, mm -hmm. no, it's not that far, but we live in Los Angeles. Everything takes forever. Yes, so it I is get far. There, I get there early and Dan Tipton texts me, on my way to pick up Henry, I should be there in an hour. And it comes crashing down on me. I had spent the entire day <laughs> thinking it was Tuesday and it was Wednesday oh, and I dear. was supposed to coach my improv team. Uh, so I was like, what? So I rushed home. Dan met me at home. I made it on time. It was fine. But I, but I legitimately spent the largest portion of my day uh, thinking it was Tuesday when it was full-blown Wednesday. Also, for the record, how is November almost over? I can't deal with it. That's why I'm saying I'm like, oh, I have time. And we break mid-December with one of my jobs. And I'm like. We're already halfway through November and there is no stopping in sight and I feel crazy. <laughs> I know, I know, right? It's, it's just been too fast. I actually I know. I actually read an article recently and I it's fascinating. I don't know if I like it. Uh, <laughs> so, you know how we always talk about when you're a kid, like the period from I don't know, I have memories from 3 years old on. Right. Right. Not a ton, but I remember specific things sure. when I was three. And then you have all these memories. So th from three to graduating high school, let's say, mm -hmm. seems like a lifetime, right? Yes. It felt like it was so long. And then you hit about your 30s and it starts ramping up. Time flies. And, yes. and then you hear old people going, you better enjoy it. It goes so fast. It goes so fast. It goes so fast. Lightning, lightning. Well, then I moved to California. There's no season, so I'm not in school. So there's none of those mile markers. But yes. they said scientifically, <laughs> scientifically in this article, they said, when you are young, everything is new. You're learning everything. So a lot of experiences hmm. are brand new. You're learning sure. how to operate within society, how to feel good, feel bad. Like everything is learning. Mm -hmm. Well, once you get older... <laughs> Not that many things are new. So we don't make as many memories and therefore time just flies it's by. Wild. And I was like, well, that makes sense, but I just sure don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it <laughs> and either. And also, if I'm teaching myself, if I'm teaching myself all this new stuff, you know, uh, every five years I'm reinventing everything I know how to do. Shouldn't I technically still be in my 30s if I'm learning <laughs> all this new stuff? I and wish. listen, I'm I'm not going full blown on record saying I'm not in my 30s, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it really does fly by the older we get, Dana. I don't know why that is. It's because we're not also, making as many hardcore memories of learning new things and new experiences. Yeah. And you're so right. So we're just like racing, racing to death. <laughs> 
We are. And the point what? about no seasons and the no markers, like how you have during, say, a school year, it mm -hmm. really, really does mess with your mind. It does. Especially when you first move here. You, you yes. feel a little bit lost in time, you know? Oh, 100%. It's crazy. Anyway, oh, yeah, crazy. I guess that's my week. I really don't have a lot to report, which is exactly what I said to my poor daddy last night when he called me. <laughs> you know what? Uh, my dad says this to me sometimes, and it's true. He says, no news is good news. Good news. I mean, sometimes. Listen, I've got some bad news on the back burner, but I don't figure y'all want it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's just life. Just life. <laughs> juice up with some of that coffee did you see my see my cup here oh Insert yeah eye roll here sassy coffee girl sassy <laughs> i love it i really jessica should that. we go ahead and get into it should we oh, get into the meat it. of it i feel in a good mood this week i'm not really sure why i will say as a woman yes i really do now no after it taking a lifetime of realizing there's like that sweet spot there's one week a month where my mood is uplifted and i'm feeling good and it's probably before my hormones go crashing down so Isn't i feel that good saying that we get we get one week a month where we feel tip top seriously i mean take that so, in <laughs> i mean maybe it's a good thing because i could actually become unhinged if i was doing this on a, a regular day on those other three weeks <laughs> i'm gonna keep my voice down a little bit because how like because hallen right will now. yell at you uh -huh. amazing <laughs> and this is about him okay oh drama um, scandalous I'm going to have a very distinct feeling that a lot of people can relate to this. Men and women, both of you, will relate to your various partners in life. I, I, I don't even know what I'm saying because I'm trying to take it down a notch. Trying to get your significant other to do mm -hmm. something for their own good. Okay. For Correct. the health of themselves for the health of their car maybe it's for the health of your home all of these things why is it that when you are the one coming at them about this that you are treated as an annoyance and a nag and i hate that word nag yeah. it's in one of my cop scenarios and my abusive husband says uh quit nagging and so i hate that that word is very triggering for me okay yeah. and i don't get triggered very easily but seriously, why is it an argument? I You may be annoyed. Great. Be annoyed with yourself. Say, yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot. Or you're right or whatever. I don't want to yeah. give TMI, but I've pushed with some things recently and mm -hmm. it has been met with, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. Like after the fact, specifically doctor's appointments. Thank mm -hmm. you. I'm really glad you kept pushing me to go. So yes. it's not to be a pain in your ass, but when you love no, and care and about I would... someone, and you're good about this too, as a friend, Dana, about I do. I push, I push people because I lost my mama in the way that I did, and yes. so now something that I said to her, and I will say it to other people I love. I just said, I know that you think I'm bullying you, and that I'm being a nag. I promise you that's not my intent. And then I held her hands and I said, you are going to die. And I am trying to keep you with me as long as I can. And now when I deal with Dan Tipton, I say, we have one son. We did not give him siblings. We have to be here for him as long as we possibly can. I also do things like, I think I've told you this, on the coffee machine. Like that man's never bought a multivitamin in his life. I buy him men's multivitamins mm -hmm. and then he won't take them and then i put them on the coffee maker because he doesn't leave the house without having coffee and mm -hmm. then i put a post-it on it and i say please take your vitamins and push the coffee maker back against the wall it will make your wife happy it worked and oh. i still unfortunately i still have to remind him i'll see his multivitamin and i'll know he's not taking it because it hasn't moved and i'll mm -hmm. put it in his work bag and I'll send it to work with him. Love it. I'm just constantly finding ways. 
And Jessica, I'm glad that you're on the people you love. If I may, yes. I don't want to be inappropriate, but I am now going to get onto you because I love you. There are things that you know you need to take care of that you are not. And listen, you might say, and I'm specifically referring to your sleep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think that's a secret. I don't think I'm talking out of school. <laughs> no, not at all. But sleep apnea is deadly. People forget this. They think, oh, I can't sleep. Apnea is a severe thing. When you're diagnosed with sleep apnea, it doesn't matter if it's severe or not severe. It Mm -hmm. is deadly. And it won't happen tomorrow and it won't happen next week. But it will take years off of your life. So I'm nagging you. I I got ranted on a rant. I'm so sorry. I read this before the show. And I was like, she's going to be really disappointed in me because 100%, Jessica, you're so right. You don't want to live a life without Alan for as long as possible and vice yes. versa. Also, I, I will want give to live life without you. Oh, well, same, lady. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's true. There's, I don't want to be hypocritical. I certainly don't because I've taken care of many things many uh, regarding things. health. Yes. But yes, that's. Yes. That has to be next on the list. And listen, um, I'll put I'll put myself right beside you, Jessica, and I'll just be open and honest with our audience so they can hold us accountable. I've needed to get my colonoscopy for three months. I just have to schedule it. Now, I have yep. to schedule it where somebody can pick me up, blah, blah, blah. But it's not that big a deal. I just haven't sat down and done it. So mm-hmm. I'm speaking to myself and to you at the same time. I'm, we're speaking to everybody. I think often, especially when... You have a family or a partner. You're always looking yes. out for them. And we get these blinders on and forget about ourselves. Also, people but have if a we fear weren't there, about that. They do. And that was another thing I was going to say. And it's not just that, you know, you mentioned things around the house, stuff like mm-hmm. that. We have an issue going on in our house that I've been balking about for several months saying, if this isn't taken care of, we're in trouble. If this mm-hmm. isn't taken care of, the ceiling's going to fall in. If this isn't going to be taken care of, we're going to be in a hotel. Like, I keep Mm -hmm. saying it. And it finally came out where I just, you know, was a steam kettle and blew my top. (laughs) But (laughs) then it came out, well, I don't know. I don't know what to do. And I was like, now that makes sense. Let me give you some tips on how to get started. Sure. Because there are some things, at least in my household, that if I just go ahead and do them, A, I'm overwhelmed as it is. And Mm -hmm. B, then it's almost like. Um, how do I say this? I don't ever want him to feel emasculated that I just take mm-hmm. over and do things sure. like that. Because in my household, I grew up with a very handy father. He could fix mm-hmm. anything. He could build anything. We had to work on cars with him. Like I, I lived a boy's life in that regard. Dan Complete Tipton grew opposite up in a home of my where... father. <laughs> okay. So that's Dan Tipton too. His father, right? he was the youngest child. His dad was elderly and passed away when he was very young. So he never learned any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Fine. They hired people to do it. So now I'm like, well, your dad at least hired somebody to fix it. That's what I need from you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it does. It works in all aspects of that. Like, mm-hmm. yes, we're not. I, I hate that word nag, too. I'm nudging you. I'm nudging yes. you to take care of yourself because I love you. And and mm-hmm. the same has to be done for me. I'm not perfect either. Totally. And I know we have listeners. You know, last year, you and I both went through a round of of a bunch of different appointments, getting a base level of where we are at our age, all these things. And we had a few listeners on that journey with us. And I got to say, it made me feel good to get it done for myself, but it also made me feel good that we could impact and encourage others to do the same. Yes, absolutely. Because we we deserve that. We deserve to be here as long as we want to be. Exactly. And everyone needs a reminder. I know I do. I actually always thank my dermatology office because they start calling you a month before you are needed. So I'm supposed to go twice a year because of my familial history and my own now with my skin. And Mm -hmm. I said that I always thank them when I'm checking in or out for my appointment. I'm like, by the way, thank you for the reminder call. And so they're like, really? They're like, so many people get annoyed by that. I said, annoyed. I said, y'all can call me 20 times and it might take, I hate it for you. It might take me the 20th call to call you back, but I swear I'll be like, oh my God, I've got to call them and I'll do it right there (laughs) finally. So thank you. I said, I, 
I will never, I'm like, you can mark that in my chart. I will never uh, be angry with you calling to remind me. So I will say the good news to this. I am glad that I made him and I'm glad that I didn't make him. He decided to go on his own, but he did have to have biopsies at two different appointments. He is very lucky. He is okay. But this is also case in point, y'all. Prevention is key uh, for health. We all know this yeah. at this point. And also early detection is key, right? 100%. So yes. please. Yes. And colonoscopy, just while we're on that subject, because so many of my friends are at an age now where you got to get it. They have officially changed the age. It is not 50. It's now no. 45. Yes, so exactly. please get it. And I will tell you, you've heard me say it before. If you've been listening to our show for a while, it is nothing. You are completely unaware that it happened. There's no pain. There's no remembrance. It's a quick procedure that's done all day, every day. And then they say, hey, you're clear for five years. Or you know what? We found some polyps. We'd like you to come back in three. Because they'll pull the polyps that are remaining at that yep. moment. Exactly. And then you go back and make sure that there's nothing coming back. And if there is, then there might be a problem and you're ahead of yep. it. So I do love this rant. I think it's more of a happy yeah. rant of like, yes. you know, and, there's it, and funny try to remember, <laughs> no, and try to remember, especially like parents and children as, as parents get older, you know, the children do become sort of the parents in a lot of regards. Just try yes. to remember if you're, listening to this and you're in this situation, whether it's your parents or your, your partner or whoever, try to keep in mind that the only reason that they push is because they love you. If exactly. they didn't love you, they'd just let you die. Yeah. <laughs> you know exactly. what I mean? Yes. It is all born out of love. You know, so I do true. like this one because I feel like it's a rant on both of us as well as for both of us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But at least we're honest about it, right, Jessica? Yeah. Yes. I said, I got ranted on my rant. I'm okay with that. And it's true. <laughs> yes, I love that. And thank you. Like, Well, there's there's four fingers pointing back at myself as I speak, so. But you guys <laughs> get a friend that you also can have be kind of your buddy and be accountable with, right? Like, yeah. there's nothing and wrong with also once in a while checking in and saying, hey, girl, uh, did you ever get the results of that mammogram or whatever it is, you know? Exactly. I mean, if if I know somebody's going through something medical, you best believe I will be doing a checkup. Yes. I, will, I will be in your business with my nose real hard, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to tell me the results. I just want to know you're on top of it. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. And I also love that you put in here, just in going back and reading the outline, I mm -hmm. love that you put in here two things like oil change wearing sunscreen getting a colonoscopy it's the little things too yeah. my friends get so irate with me because i am a sunscreen nazi it's because i'm I albino you can one. see through my skin yeah. yep i can't be out in the sun legitimately this is not an exaggeration i cannot be out in the sun for more than 10 minutes without some sort of protection i yes. will burn what it's so easy Slap some white snot on your skin and don't die. Done. <laughs> it's it's major. And I'll tell you what, I was really, really angry with myself the other day because I forgot to put it on. And I was like, well, I didn't think I'd be out in direct sun this long. And I'm like, that's the case in point. And my dermatologist said that to me. She goes, it's got to just be part of your daily habit. And she went does, a step yeah. further. I'm not, there's, I'm not a, a medical expert, obviously. I'm just telling you what I was told. I go, yeah, but a lot of times I'm working from home and I'm literally sitting in front of my computer for eight hours. By the time I walk outside to get some fresh air, other than for a quick like run down to the trash, I don't mm -hmm. get to see sunlight. She goes, the blue light from your computer and a television goes towards aging and is also affecting skin. She goes, you need to be wearing sunblock every day. And I was like, what? what? So, and we have I to reapply, right? Hallen yeah. will get annoyed about reapplying. He's like, I already put some on. I'm like, great. It's been several hours. It's put it on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> At least he's good about wearing well, a hat because he's bald. That is good. 
Yes, because his scalp would burn so easily. Yes. Sensitive. My kid always complains he doesn't want to put it on. I just slap it on him anyway. Yep. It's women. We're kind of lucky if you're a woman that wears any sort of makeup or moisturizer. I always mm-hmm. buy with SPF in it. Yes. Just in case I forget. Totally. Yeah. It's huge. Also, <sighs> it is for her skin, but I will say this. I think I've said it before. One of my friends in college, Mr. Jeremy Simmons, who was a lifeguard throughout our time in college, he is black. And I remember he got severely burned once. Like, yeah, he came over yeah. and he pulled his short leg up and I'm like, <gasps> I was like, I'm not trying to be an idiot. I didn't even know the black skin could get burned. He goes, girl, neither did I. And, oh, but no. It doesn't matter. Anyone can get burned and everyone is affected by UV rays. So, yeah. A hundred percent. And they make lotions with SPF in it, too. And I will say, yes. you, and they also make detergent things, packets you can put in for your clothes that that release a deposit into the fibers of your clothing to make it UV resistant for a certain amount of time. And that's because people think I used to do it for Henry when he was a baby Hmm. because he hated me putting sunscreen. And I was like, well, I'm just going to give extra protection, you know, Um, because you can get burnt, but you know, under your clothes, it can UV rays can go through your clothes just like you can get sunburnt on a cloudy day. Yeah. Uh, Oh my God. Yes, for sure. And yeah, you're right. You think it's overcast. It's, Fine. No, actually, still those are get the days burnt. that my eyes are probably the most sensitive to the sun. Mm-hmm. And especially those of you with snow in your area. Ooh, mm-hmm. that sun refracts off that snow. It's just oh, like a laser beam a... burning all y'all. Yep. You can get a yep. hell of a burn. I used to look like a raccoon when I would ski in the springtime. And my glasses or goggles would be, this would be as white as it is now. And this was literally tomato red. And probably burnt from the wind and snow. Ugh, ouchie. Yeah. I looked <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> no, God. you didn't. You were skiing. You were cool no matter what. Ooh. I miss skiing. <laughs> I haven't gone in years and Alan is not a fan. So I hate it. I hate it. You hate it? I love uh. it. Oh my god! I love no, it. No, I've I've told you that story about the only time I went skiing, I got kicked off the bunny hill. Oh uh, yeah. Because they have that rope where they pull you up, and I fell off the rope and knocked down like twelve children, and then I couldn't get up, and my mama climbed up the hill and was trying to help me get off because they were like, "You're gonna have to leave the bunny hill," and it took us like thirty minutes to even get me on my feet and in a way, and children just kept coming and knocking into <laughs> me like it was the worst, oh, and I was an adult. God. It wasn't like I was 12 learning a new skill. I was a full blown uh, in my mid 20s well, adult. It's hard. That it's I think very hard to learn you don't to ski go- as an adult. Yes. As an adult. Anything like I think about roller skating, ice skating. If you don't learn those things as a child, just don't bother as an adult because you're going to break bones. You just brought up another <laughs> sore subject. I saw that the broken animal- bones. <laughs> no. The annual <laughs> holiday uh, winter ice, ice rink, rink in Santa Monica has gone up. They also do one in like Pershing Square downtown. Pershing Square. They had a commercial or like a thing on the news last night about it. And I said, oh, can we go? And Alan's like, nope, I don't skate yeah. either. <laughs> Alan and I are male, female versions of one another. I know. Except I'm he likes waiting. more foods than I do. That is very true, but I'm still yeah, waiting for you guys to rendezvous at the archery range near you. Oh, that'd be lovely. I'd love it. <laughs> I know. And plus my son wants him to take him fishing on the pier because Alan yes, does fishing a lot. Totally. Oh boy. So many plans. No time. <laughs> <laughs> Should I go ahead and move into my oh, rant? Oh yeah, do it. This is a funny one because I'm not sure where this is going to go, Jessica. Are you surprised? I think you will be. How to teach your child how to wipe their bum. Now, we will, uh, maybe I'll try and do some some magic uh, in TikTok and, and post. Us, by the way. Yes. And post a little bit of the, of the video that was sent to us. Um, <laughs> it's called, this is, from, this is from Crafty Moms. So this is learn to wipe your bum. And it is a visual representation. <laughs> so she drew a cardboard picture of a butt, like a body, a back, the arms, a butt, and the top of the thighs. 
And then she took two pink balloons and glued them on the cardboard as if they were butt cheeks. Right? <laughs> it's, I'm already so <laughs> angry. <laughs> and then you take Nutella and you spread it between the two balloons as if there's <clears throat> poo-poo smooshed into your butt cheeks. Absolutely And then you not. take a wipe and you teach the child how to wipe the poo-poos. And watching these children wipe the poo-poos, Nutella poo-poos, is horrifying to me. But um, it is teaching them. Now, <laughs> now here's what I'm going to say. Is it ridiculous, Jessica? Yes. I, I can see how that might be ridiculous. However, this is where I veer off and I think you're going to be I upset agree. with me. <laughs> it is a very good visual representation of what the end goal is and how to do it. Because if you think okay. about it, we can't see our own butt cheeks. Okay. We can't see. So You're this right. shows us what's happening down there and what needs to happen. And as a mother, especially of a boy who in his younger years has walked out with his hands covered in feces from bad wipes. Oh! <laughs> and also due to the fact that it is what? well known. Sunglasses! <laughs> it is well known. That many men in the world, now I'm very lucky, I have a germaphobe for a husband, so I don't have to worry about it. But I think I hear a he lot of women latex complain. gloves when he has a bowel movement. He <laughs> wanted to wear latex gloves every time he changed a diaper when our Shut son up, was I born. Totally and I was like, it. I said, you be my guest, but you're going to get real sick of it real quick. And we're going to spend a fortune in gloves. So be my guest. <laughs> I, that did not last. That did not last. But... So many women complain about men having skid marks in their underwear. Okay? Maybe men are visual learners. And they need to see how to get between those two balloon humps and get that poo-poo's out of there. So you are suggesting you that our listeners make this for their male partners, if they have one. <laughs> I'm not going to be specific and say male, but I did use a male story example. I'm just saying it's a cl cliches are cliches for a reason. And what do we know about boys? Skid marks in their underwear. I'm just saying. And and like I said, my husband is not one of them. He's a germaphobe. Thank God, or we'd probably be divorced. You think I would ever do a man's laundry if he had poo-poo stains in his pants? Mm -mm. I, I, we'd go broke because I'd buy you new underwear every week. I couldn't handle it. I do not want to see the remains of your bowel movements. And if it requires me blowing up a couple of balloons and shoving some Nutella in there to show you how to appropriate clean, appropriately clean your bum hole, I'll do it. Visual representation. Fine. I'll do it. I see. This is where I knew you were because I'm sure you thought Dana hates poop. Dana uh, hates farts. She's yes. absolutely going to be against this. No, 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 no. Because the end, the goal, the objective of this is cleanliness. And that I can get behind. Um, <laughs> okay, Dana Moye. <laughs> you get that butt clean. I don't care what it takes. I don't care how much toilet paper you got to use. And if it's a major problem, you might need to see the doctor about your poo poos or get a bidet. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> It's I mean, really not bidets, okay. You, you think it's not okay. You think it's not okay. <laughs> Are you Matt? Do you like Nutella? Listen, I still can't. I still can't. I've probably asked you this before. I have never. Yes, I love Nutella. So we've already crossed a line with that right there. Um, <laughs> I don't know that I can never look at it the same again. But I am still somebody who it's like, listen, I still forget about modern technology i'm still like how did someone create the wheel i feel that way about how do you teach a child to go to the bathroom i ask every friend yeah. that has a child i don't understand how you explain or teach going to the bathroom i don't yeah to this day it's I not don't. easy it's very not easy. feeling down there like what what do you say to them i know well, and just like, especially they say for some reason, boys are really, really afraid to poo poo. And we had that problem. And it's because something comes out of them and then disappears down a black hole and it frightens them. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so disgusting and weird, and <laughs> I don't is, like it. This is a foul conversation, but the reason I'm on board with this is because it's a teaching tool. It's not sure. a dog that you take out for fun and feed it and then squeeze poop out its butt. Poo-poo is not a game. This was a learning video. It wasn't a game. Oh, my God. Poopsie. Remember the unicorn that made uh, rainbow swirly emoji poop? Yes. And there's that <laughs> wiener dog. That wiener dog oh. toy that its entire purpose is to poo-poo. And they no. say, oh, it teaches kids how to poo-poo. I don't want my kid pooping on the sidewalk like a dog. Sorry. It's not a learning <laughs> tool. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say, I know a person who, to potty train her son, he was having issues with going in the toilet, and she pee-pees anyway. She let him start by pee-peeing in the backyard, and then they moved into the toilet. And I was like, whatever it takes. Yeah. Look, and honestly, it's a shortcut anyway. Area, sure. Because the first time I wanted my son to pee-pee in public... (laughs) Taken out of context, that's a terrible statement. But we Just were in the traveling. middle of the town square. No, we what? were traveling during the height of COVID because of family okay. deaths. And so I did not want him going in because the states that I have to cross to get to where I was going, boy, they don't they don't believe it in sickness. <laughs> and so I did not want him going in with all those truckers and, you know, people who just didn't care. And so uh... I was like, can we pee pee? Can we pee-pee outside? And he was like, what? He was petrified. Aww. Petrified. Yeah. So. <laughs> because he's a polite little boy. Aww. Yeah. He just didn't. He's like, there's trucks. I was like, we're going to hide. Mommy's going to stand in with, you know. <laughs> but oh, now they make up the, they make those pop-up tents you can carry in the trunk of your car where you can like go potty or change clothes on the beach or whatever. It's crazy. Those are very I wish smart, I'd known actually. about those. Yeah, I wish I'd known about right. those years ago before I even had a kid. How many times was I changing in my car for auditions? Okay. Oh, my God. In the back seat. Always. I remember in the back seat. how awkward that was and trying to be like this and make sure no one was walking by. A hundred percent. That was horrible. We could have used that. <laughs> And we basically had a closet in our cars because we were just, I remember one time I had an audition and she was like, hey, do you think you have anything in your car that's more lingerie like? And I was like, I'm sorry, what? No. <laughs> First of all, no. And second of all, if I carried that in my car, would you not think I was a weirdo or a, a walker of the evenings? Okay. Oh, yeah. I always keep a lace teddy in my gym bag. Also, I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you blind? Nobody wants me in lingerie. <laughs> Except my husband. He begs sometimes. <laughs> sometimes he begs. Sometimes it's as if he's blind and didn't even see. He's like, oh, jammies. Okay, great. But that's, you know, just my own personal issues. But yeah, no, I don't carry lingerie in my car. <laughs> Do you okay. have anything more lingerie like in your car? I'm. Can you fathom asking somebody that? No, it's so weird, okay? It's so weird. It's so weird. You're not a traveling clown with multiple costumes, okay? Well, that's what they treat us like, so. (laughs) 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 Definitely. I I think I've probably more than once been described as a traveling clown, with or without my knowledge. I'm sure. (laughs) I'm positive. (laughs) So. I'm coming down on the side of educational tool for the <sighs> Nutella poo poo balloons. Okay. Are you going to stick? Are you? <laughs> oh, okay. She said. But you I mean, are I allowed guess to. <laughs> it answers my question with how do you. Well, it's still not teaching. How do you explain to them how to go when it's time to go? But I guess, yes, the moral of the story is do it until it's clean. Do it until there's nothing on the paper or the wipe. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Fine. Happy his now. Wife is gonna, his wife is going to be real grateful to me for making that happen. Or his husband, whatever he chooses. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but we're, we're far away from that yet. But whatever, whoever he chooses as a partner is going to be like, thank you, Dana. Thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God. Well, 
I know that we need to get to our cleansing breath. We've just ranted. But real quick before we start, can you tell everybody how to get a hold of us so you can write in what frustrates you in case you don't want us talking about poo-poo next week? Yes. And you guys, <laughs> write in at any time. There is a listener that I am going to be messaging after we finish recording for our next show. But um, they asked me, oh, tag me because uh, I have a great rant and I forgot to, but do not ever think it has to be at a certain time or right before you think we may record. We record all no. the time, all over the place. Yeah. If you have an idea, please, 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 please send it in to us. And again, if you already follow us on Instagram or Facebook, you can just quickly pop on there and send us a message. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at The Rants and Raves Podcast. You can find us on Twitter for the time being at raves underscore the, <laughs> you can send us an email at the rants and raves podcast at gmail.com. You can go to the contact button on our website, www.therantsandravespodcast.com. You can follow, watch, like, and subscribe to our new and improved YouTube channel. We've always had the audio files going up there. Now Dana has been editing and putting up a full length, visual episode the video to match with our audio so you can see it happening uh not in real time but you know what i'm saying uh but you can see for example last week they could watch you pretend scale a tree <laughs> <That's true. laughs> and dana has been putting some lovely little tidbits so you can get a little taste of what you can watch on our tiktok which is at the rants and raves p the letter P. Yeah. They just give you a limit. So it's the Ransom Raves P. Yeah, they just, <laughs> they, I didn't even realize that they limit it. And the first time you said this out loud on the show, I was like, what is she talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I do that too a awesome. lot. And I'll be so annoyed because I'll like type something up for work. And then I'm like, why did the last half of that that I just spent 10 minutes compiling get cut off and it's cut off there's the text limit i'm like well they didn't like stop me it should just stop no but a lot of things let you yeah. read it and then they just cut it off jerks yes i know <sighs> Give Ooh, me that we cleansing got worked breath up before again. i go into another yes. rant we've got to get in on that cleansing breath so a staple of our show is we rant out sometimes the silly although this week that first rant was an important one Yep. Get on your people and get on yourself and take care of yourself and your surroundings. Yep, we can get serious um, here. We get serious every once in a while. Mm -hmm. So we rant it out and then we need to cleanse it. We need to cleanse it. Oh, we yeah. take a deep breath in. Please scream it out if you have the opportunity. It feels so good. If you can't, at least take a breath with us. Are you ready? I am. Take a deep breath in. And... <sighs> Yay. Okay, are we ready for corners? Oh, yeah, for our corners. Okay. Oh, yeah. We just yeah. zoomed into them. Awesome. You're this, up first, lady. This is an Animal Instincts corner, and I hate it because this wasn't a choice on the part of said animal, or insect for that matter. This comes to us from Reuters. Am I even saying that right? Reuters? How do you say that? Re I don't know I think how it's to pronounce Reuters. that. Reuters. That's how, the, Ren that's how all the news reporters said it when I worked in news. Reuters. Isn't that a shocker? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is from Brendan O'Brien. Massachusetts okay. woman accused of assaulting officers with a swarm of angry bees. Okay. Um, what? I'm interested to learn how. A Massachusetts woman stands accused of using a swarm of bees as a dangerous weapon, according to a county sheriff, after she allegedly unleashed a hive of angry insects on deputies trying to serve an eviction notice last week. Oh. Okay. Uh, I feel bad for anyone who is facing eviction, so it's not to be heartless, but I am sorry if you have broken the law or done something you cannot then do something violent towards people who are just doing their job, which that's what 100% they're doing. Also, in this case. not for nothing, 
not only were the officers victims, but so were the bees. Because if a bee yes. stings, they die. Yes. <laughs> okay, continue. The incident unfolded when Rory Woods, a 55-year-old professional beekeeper, so that is what <gasps> made me so incensed. How shame you on that? you! Yes, professional beekeeper. That person knows better. Okay. Drove up to the home, I also can't believe this, in Long Meadow. Do you know how much of my family is from Long Meadow, Massachusetts? A lot. Oh. <laughs> Drove up to the home in Long Meadow while deputies were in the process of enforcing the eviction notice. The residents outside of Springfield in the south central part of the state belonged to a man who had been litigating against the removal for years, garnering support of anti-eviction activists, including Woods, a department spokesperson said in an email. When she arrived at 9.15 a.m. local time, towing a stack of manufactured beehives with an SUV, Woods exited the vehicle and tried to open the lids to unleash the bees. What? <laughs> A sheriff's deputy tried to stop her, but as the agitated bees started getting out and circling the area, he pulled back. She then smashed the lid of one hive and flipped it off no. the flatbed, agitating the bees. They swarmed the area, stinging several officers and bystanders who were nearby. What about somebody who also may be allergic to bees? Allergic. Yeah. That can kill someone. Also, you're traumatizing your bees. I mean, it's... they're just like in their house hanging out and they're like, okay. man, why are we in the back of this SUV? Oh, my God. Somebody just smashed us and then knocked our like, what are you doing? It's so you're insane. terrorizing people and the bees because right? you don't want to get out of a house you don't belong in. Shame on you. It says one deputy was taken to the hospital to be treated. So obviously he was greatly affected by that. Meanwhile, Woods put on a professional beekeeper suit to protect herself. Herself. Wow. And she carried a tower of bees to the front door of the home, trying to stop the eviction. At that point, deputies arrested her. I support people's right to protest peacefully, but when you cross the line and put my staff and the public in danger, I promise you will be arrested, Hamden County Sheriff Nick Kochi said. Yeah, good on you. Attempts to reach a lawyer for Woods were unsuccessful. Woods, who lives in Hadley, Massachusetts, faces four felony counts of assault and battery by means of a dangerous weapon. I was going to say, weapon. that's assault. Yep. Mm -hmm. And three counts of assault by means of a dangerous weapon. Wait. And I would also add to that. And battery. I would add to that animal abuse. I would too. And I mean, she we're pleaded... all trying our best. To, to protect she, bees right now. It's a major issue. She pleaded not guilty. Of course. Well, I can't wait to see because I hope there's an update about that story. What a creep. I hate that. Yes. Yes. I if would be furious that anyone falls into did the it. Same, yes. This falls into the same vein as like people who kick geese. Are geese assholes a lot of the time? Yes. Does that mean you kick them? No. No. Okay, you're living in a house you're not supposed to. Does that mean you get to hurt people and bees? No. Right. Somebody needs to buzz off. Mind what their is own happening? beeswax. Stop it. Stop it. You know what? That leads me right into my corner. And the only reason is because <laughs> as I was reading the outline, because yes, we do plan out our shows, whether it's <laughs> obvious or not. Um, my corner was a what the what corner. It's coming up. And then... The title of it, not the title of the article, the title of my corner, which usually is just a what the what corner, but someone added cockadoodle pew pew. Now, Jessica, <laughs> did you add that on your own or was it in the article? Um, I added that. Yeah. Uh, shame on you as well. <laughs> It is an interesting story, and I cannot be too harsh on you because the news actually became David Moyer pun masters as well, and I will get to that. So this is from NBCNews.com. Again, this is a what the what corner. This is uh, by the Associated Press. 
so they don't credit their writers, I guess. <laughs> There's no name on here. Oh. Anyway, handgun found inside raw chicken in luggage at Florida Airport, TSA says. That is a heck of a, 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 a headline. I'm going to read it again. There was a handgun found inside of a raw chicken in the luggage of a person at Florida Airport. Unreal. Security officers at a South Florida airport have reported finding a handgun hidden inside <laughs> of a raw chicken packed in a traveler's luggage. The Transportation no. Security yes, The Transportation Security Administration posted photos. That's the funny thing. We'll try I'll see if I can fit them into a TikTok, but I'll show you on here in a second. Posted photos of the gun and poultry with a pun filled caption Monday on its official Instagram account. The weapon was recovered at the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. Ugh, here's a quote from the from the post. We hate to beak it to you here, but stuffing a firearm in your holiday bird for travel is just a base of time. Okay. Here is You know what this should have been that? a rant. There look at because that. I don't appreciate them then, making light of this. Well, and that I've is got disgusting. more disgusting. Okay, so it's a gun. It looks like it's wrapped in paper or a plastic bag and then shoved into the torso of a raw chicken. So on the on their TSA Seminola. the watch also this is TSA Washington DC, okay? So it's like the head or whatever cuz this is Fort Lauderdale, right? That it happened. But on Instagram the post was on the official TSA Instagram. Let me read it to you. There's a personal foul here. F O W L. The plot chickens as we barrel our way closer to Thanksgiving. For us, it's a time to be thankful that our officers are always working around the cluck to keep you safe. Take, for instance, this Can You Believe It? find at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. We hate to no. peek it to you here, but stuffing a firearm in your holiday bird for travel is just a waste of time. This idea wasn't even half baked, it was raw. Greasy and obviously unsupervised. The only roast happening here is this poor packing choice. Feather you like it or not, there are rules for traveling with guns and ammunition. So don't wing it. Roost over the proper packaging info through the link in our bio. Hashtag raw chicken. Hashtag chicken. Hashtag concealed. Hashtag airport security. This is... Didn't identify the traveler who... Oh my God, are you okay? <laughs> no. I'm not. That was written by somebody who works for airport security and not a submission to funny the or official. die. No, the post didn't identify the traveler who was transporting the weapon or whether any arrests were made. According to the TSA, fresh meat, seafood, and other non-liquid items are permitted in both carry-on and checked bags as long as they are packed in ice. Unloaded firearms are allowed to be transported in checked bags, but they must be declared at the ticket counter and packed in a locked, hard-sided container. Great. So you can travel with guns, just not inside of a raw chicken. Whose brainchild was that? What brain trust of people came up with, hey, let's wrap a gun in paper or plastic and shove it in a chicken to go through a machine that x-rays. Now, an mm -hmm. x-ray means you can see to bone. Okay? So they can mm -hmm. see through that chicken and see the exact shape. Of your stupid gun, you moron. And what the heck was so important that you had to sneak your gun with you to the point that you'd stuff it in a chicken? Seeping raw salmonella and bacteria. Yes. But also, you're right, Jessica. Why is the TSA making light of this? Someone, I don't think it's first of funny. All, I don't either. First of all, I, I don't care who you are or what you're doing. I really don't want you getting on a plane with a raw chicken. It's just unnecessary. Okay? <laughs> okay. Buy a chicken wherever you're going because Thank it's not you. refrigerated. Okay? And if you're going to try and hide anything, d why would you choose a food? They're going to notice a raw food in your luggage. Right? No. Yes. It's so, so, so gross. And like... I hope they got arrested. You know so you're not I. supposed to bring guns on a plane. You were trying to sneak it. You deserve to get in trouble. Ugh. Our corners made me upset I this hate week. It. I know. Our corners are more rant than anything else. 
I mean, because honestly. They're all creeps. Creep. Oh Lord, have mercy. Well, well, let let me give us let me give us some exciting an exciting way to get into here. Let me yes. just pick something new. Are you ready? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> blew my hair. Raves. This is the good stuff. I love it. So we are going with a little bit of a theme, uh, even though we love giving back and doing things for others year round. There is never a right or wrong time to do that. It's always good. But this is Thanksgiving. It's also holiday season is in full swing. So mm -hmm. we tend to think about our fellow citizen and brother and sister in this world a little bit more. And this caught my eye. One of my friends from college had posted this from one of her kids goes to a school called the Weber School in Atlanta. And she had her car filled up and I couldn't believe it. And she said, wow, thank you. Can't believe our students made 1500 sandwiches, which are wow. I am now taking to the sandwich project. And I'm like the sandwich project. And I'm from Atlanta. That's my hometown. So I looked this up and I loved it because it is a really tiny, small grassroots organization. And so many people can get involved with this. I love so that. Let's sandwich, get it out there. Mm -hmm. Everybody spread the word about this. The sandwichproject.org. They are a 501c3 nonprofit whose volunteers assemble and donate fresh housemade sandwiches each week for immediate consumption to meet the food scarcity needs in Metro Atlanta. Early in 2020, as we witnessed COVID-19 change our lives in a profound and enduring way, a group of friends began making sandwiches to help those most affected by the pandemic. For our neighbors already living with food insecurity, the results were devastating. Supply chain issues, food prices spiraled, made it even more difficult to procure nutrient-dense high-protein foods. Mm. As word of the project spread, neighbors in the wider community joined the effort. Soon the group was making thousands of sandwiches each week and delivering them to nonprofit organizations throughout the area. Our team also began donating fresh fruit and protein bars to our recipients. To reach people in need, the Sandwich Project leaders made the decision to set up host homes to offer convenient drop-off locations for vol volunteers to deliver sandwiches. TSP delivers our donations to small nonprofit groups that in turn deliver food to areas where people cannot access food pantries. The reasons people cannot get to a grocery store or food pantry are complicated, but we are reaching them with the help of our partner organizations and our dedicated volunteers. So I love that. That was something that also really yeah. hit home to me. There's a number of reasons why people can't and or don't. So they are taking the extra step to help those who are in even greater need than sadly what we see right in front of our eyes, right? To reach people in need of food, TSP leaders made the decision to set up host homes to offer convenient drop-off locations for volunteers to deliver the sandwiches. TSP delivers the donations to small nonprofit groups that in turn deliver food to areas where people cannot access food pantries. The reason, oh, sorry, I'm repeating myself. The reasons people cannot get to a grocery store or food pantry are complicated, but we are reaching them with the help of our partner organizations. To date, the Sandwich Project hosts approximately 30 collection locations and has donated over 650,000 sandwiches and thousands of pounds of fruit and protein bars to the more than 60 recipient organizations. Wow. That's huge. That's a massive impact. That is huge, mm -hmm. right? So they have a tab for how to get involved. You can make sandwiches. You can host a collection site. You can organize groups and projects. Like again, the school did this. You could be an ambassador and you can also make deliveries, transport sandwiches to the community organizations. I love this. All the pictures on their site are groups of friends getting together, lots of young kids and students, adorable, holding up the bags Aww. and you might and so those bags are filled with pre-made sandwiches they have a whole protocol and everything is individually wrapped so it can be handed out to people and be kept fresh and clean and safe and everything else i love it 
It's an easy thing to do. Mm-hmm. Again, they ask for peanut butter and jelly or turkey, ham, or one of those two with cheese. They have their list of how to do it. It's very simple. It's something that a group of friends could get together and do very easily. And again, something you could do in your area. There's ways to get involved. You don't just have to be in Atlanta, but this is amazing organization based there. And I just love it. I love that. Thank you, Jessica. Tell us again where yes. how we can find them. They are the sandwichproject.org. I love too that it mentions do it with your friends. Like I don't think that's something I ever thought of when I was younger, but the more that we've been doing this show, like it does hit me because you and I have, you know, mm-hmm. we want to do things together and have done things personally and whatever, and I'm usually like, well, I do it alone. Why? Mhm. You know what I mean? I know. That actually leads me into into my rave as well. My rave this week is socksforsouls.com. And I'm going to start out telling you a little bit about them and then read to you. We have a specific place here in Los Angeles, an event coming up that actually mm-hmm. Jessica sent me the link for. It's on Eventbrite even, which I love that mm-hmm. even Eventbrite is getting involved with like spreading the right? word. So yes. we've talked about this many, many times before that socks are one of the most needed things for people who are displaced um, and it's the least donated so just keep that in mind so this is socksforsouls.com they call themselves a sock ministry socially (laughs) responsible and they have a thing right when you get on their page they have a thing that says one dollar socks for the homeless socks are the number here it is socks are the number one requested least donated item to those in need show your care for one dollar a pair 100% 100% of $1 socks purchased are donated to those in these. 100% of those Incredible. dollar socks. I love it so much. They're a 501c3. And I will f- sorry, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. And I it's so obvious. So I was going to say $1. Everyone can give $1 a year. We pay more for that for one right? cup of coffee. For a cup of coffee, right? I mean, you go to Starbucks, you're buying five pairs of socks, right? Okay. Yeah. It's the equivalent. Yes. Yeah, you're right. I mean, honestly. So Socks for Souls is a 501c3 nonprofit. And Socks Service Drives, he, he, this is how it relates to your post. This is something that you can do anywhere, and they give you the tools to do it. So Socks Service Drives, are you or your organization interested in helping those in need by hosting a no-cost, no-risk, no-minimum turnkey sock service drive, you've come to the right place. Socks for Souls provides you and your organization with all of the sales and marketing materials needed free of charge to hold a successful sock service drive. It doesn't get any easier than that. You can get all of the details on our How Sock Service Drives Work page and you can go there. They tell you everything about it. But what it is, let me see if I can show you here for those of you watching. So they'll send you this sock drop box and it's just a big cardboard box that, yeah. So like sometimes when you donate at uh, various places, they'll have boxes outside or bins. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. But they make it so that they can send it to you. You have no work to do here. And it literally says on it, sock drop box, socks for souls. It tells a little bit about it and it talks about like, you know, how you can find them, stuff like that. So they'll send that to you. Go to their website, ready to get sock drive started. All you need to do is fill out our start a sock drive form. I just want to reiterate, guys, no cost, no risk, no minimum. You can just set a box up for for collection, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's amazing. At Socks for Souls, our first and most important calling is to collect socks for the homeless. We donate 100% of all $1 sock purchases to those in need. Our second calling is to help organizations collect socks for those in need by providing a no cost, no risk, no minimum sock drive solution. And what I want to get back to is for those in our area, you can go to Eventbrite. There is a sock drive coming up. Thankful to Give on Thanksgiving Day 2022 is a special community outreach program happening on Thanksgiving morning at 9 a.m. Volunteers are asked to bring donations, including hygiene kits, socks, blankets, and or bottles of water. However, even if you don't have any donations, you are still invited to volunteer. Volunteers will walk a total of two miles, round trip, 
as you walk from Pershing Square to 5th Street in San Pedro, areas where people are in need living outside of shelters. That's right around Skid Row. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. if you don't live here, you hear the term Skid Row, and I think it's something you think of in movies and stuff. It's a real place yeah. with real mm-hmm. human beings, hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of them Th- living no, outside of shelter. Yes, living mm-hmm. outside of shelter. So if you're in the Los Angeles area, that's Thanksgiving Day. Go to Eventbrite um, for Socks for Souls. They're having an event that you can participate in and help hand out things to people in need. Mm-hmm. If you are not in this area, they give you all the resources you need. We'll send you all the supplies you need to host a sock drive in your area. All the work's done for you. You just get a box right. and then you yep. and then you deliver them. So I love it so much. Socks for Souls uh, dot com. Dot com dot org. It's a perfect thing to set up at a school. Yes. Uh, I mean, you obviously have to work with your school and get permission for it. Uh, An office, if you are in an office building, even like on the main floor where everyone can do it, not just the folks in your office, a church, a synagogue. There's so many ways and places to put that in where... And there's no yeah, minimum. In, so you don't have to worry about like, am I going to be responsible for sending enough in? There's no responsibility. Mm-hmm. It's just pure giving. And I love it yep. so much. You know, those uh, library boxes, we're seeing more and more of those pop up in yes. people's neighborhoods. So they're like a box mm-hmm. and people often make them very cute. And people put books mm-hmm. that they're done reading in there. And you can take a book and leave a book, whatever you want to do. Exactly. It takes more effort to get one of those in your neighborhood than this does. You have to go through exactly. the city. You have to get permission. It is There is mm-hmm. some work that goes into it. If you have the time to do something like that, you have the time to do this. Yes. You, have a ta- you have the time to do a Socks for Souls drive in your area because it's literally mm-hmm. just a cardboard box they send you. All the work's done. Yep. Absolutely. I love it. I love, I, I, love I God, I wish I had made, I wish I had won that $2 billion jackpot. There'd be nobody without socks and food. And, okay. <laughs> you know, a guy, a guy in Pasadena won it. Won, it, it was a sole person. Yep. Crazy. Anyway, socksforsouls.com. Please check them out. You can do this easily in your area. And for those of you near us, Thanksgiving Day is going to be a big one. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Dana. Jessica. Fantastic rave. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. I think that's our show. I think it is. Oh, my gosh. You want to tell everybody one more time how to get a hold of us? Yes, please. Find us. Reach out. Like, comment, share, save, whatever you want to do. We love you. At the Rants and Raves podcast on Facebook and Instagram. You can also find us on Twitter at Raves underscore the Follow, subscribe, like, and watch us on YouTube. You can also find us on TikTok, The Rants and Raves P. Just, that's it. The Rants and Raves yes, P. Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, I just don't want people to get confused because everything is case sensitive and there's a lot of things out there with the words rants and raves in it. Mm-hmm. Um, you can send us an email directly at the Rants and Raves podcast at gmail.com or go to the contact button on our website, www.therantsandravespodcast.com. As always, thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being our friends and uh, walking through this wildlife with us. We appreciate you. And Dana and I talk about our listeners on a weekly basis and we are eternally grateful to you truly i just so you know in the interview that i did for our podcast yesterday for the listen notes search engine mm-hmm. i specifically mentioned our audience in our community so many times yes. because you guys are the reason that we continue doing this you guys support us you support us in our personal lives in our professional endeavors like Yes. We could not be more grateful. And I'm sure every podcaster says this, but like, we really do mean it. I don't know if everybody do. else does, but Jessica and I really do. You guys are special to us and we love you and appreciate you very, very much. Thank you, Jessica, for letting people know how they can get a hold of us. I was thinking about Twitter and how we've always say, said how much we hate Twitter and how it is <laughs> the wild, wild west right now. Did you see that somebody... Imploding. Yeah, people are making posts. They buy that $8 official and they're making posts from Elon Musk, Eric Trump, like just ridiculous oh, yeah. stuff. Listen, Did I don't... Did you see the Eli Lilly one? No. Okay. 
somebody went on and bought a verified mm -hmm. Eli Lilly and put up their logo and all that and their post for the day. This happened within the week. We are happy to say that as of today, insulin is now free. It was not true. Of course not. And their, their stock plummeted $20 million, like oh some staggering. God. It was insane. And it was like a lot of people have been doing stuff like that. And I was kind of chuckling because like you woman, created this I monster thought, commented and said uh as a lifetime registered nurse this gives me such great joy and pleasure you have no idea wow. because they also were doing it because it shows that i don't think it's any secret mm -mm. the disparity between the price of insulin mm -hmm. here than in countries around the world other countries yeah it's not and okay it's no it's, it's literally about making money it's not about the health and welfare yes. of others Correct. I hate Twitter mm -hmm. still. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, is there anything you need to share mm -hmm. that you're that you're watching or enjoying or anything? Well, I did watch something very recently that was quite fun. I think you would really like it. Okay. Um, I watched Weird, the Al Yankovic story. Did you? I have not watched that yet, but I will. I love weird al then you're gonna love it because it's a parody about his life uh-huh and it's an all-star cast there are so many cameos of people just in for uh a brief minute daniel radcliffe uh, -huh. uh he's really great i've heard he's amazing i i like him in general I do he's too. fantastic and he's all in as weird i al. saw I a picture it. you gotta see it i saw a picture of weird al uh daniel radcliffe i almost said harry potter mm -hmm. you, you know you can't get over it i'll never get over it um yeah, yeah, yeah. and then also yorma tacom as peewee and it was shocking yes 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 also uh -huh. i mean i know this goes public um <laughs> i just want to say yorma we, we worked together one time on a commercial you were directing and um we had a blast. You asked me to stay the day because I ended up getting cut from the commercial. But um, you asked me if I would sit beside you and stay the day, and I did. And I love you. <laughs> I just love you. Okay. <laughs> what are you going to do? Funny That's boys amazing. just do it for me. I'm sorry. I love a okay. funny man. Love a funny yes. Also, he's hot. I mean, he could Likewise. be dead boring, and I'd still stare uh... at him. Okay. It's so terrible for me to be saying things like this. I'm going to get in trouble because that's like real close to our inner circle. So I need to shut up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've just been, I don't have anything new to report on things that I've been watching except Jessica. I'm so ashamed of myself. I cannot get out of the shit storm that is Sister Wives. Cody Brown's family is falling apart, oh. but the wives are starting to, well, a couple of them, I'll say that, are starting to really come into their own, and I love it. Good for them. Is it a real, is it a fictional story, or is it real? Well, I'm sure that there are things, we all know reality TV is never completely real, but there are elements okay. of that show, like, like one of his lo wives has left him. She's been gone for a year. She is no longer oh. a believer in the faith. Like, it is drama. <laughs> oh, and instead whoa. of going and watching the show, this is the maniac that I am. Instead of going and, like, watching the show, no, nope, I just watch clips on Instagram. Just clip after clip after clip from different accounts that Instagram feeds me because it's like, oh, psycho, here's 90 Day Fiance. Here's, like, just all these different ones. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. you don't need to watch it. Just hit me up. I can tell you what's going on with the Browns. <laughs> <laughs> so shameful Amazing. at least i'm not doing love is blind i've been very tempted but i saw an article that said love is blind is for masochists and people who like to see other people hurt and i was like oh good i don't oh, fall God. into that category yet yet Oof. <laughs> okay okay i always like to end the show with just something for you to ponder for the week just an interesting something jessica mm -hmm. for some reason yes I don't know why. I just was like, I wonder if there's any interesting facts about the tongue. Because 
<laughs> because I think we all pretty much know. I think we learned in elementary school there are different quadrants on your tongue. Like uh, one side mm-hmm. is sweet, one side is salty, you know, taste buds and all that. So I got a couple facts here about your tongue, okay? Okay. Those bumps on your tongue are not taste buds. Did you know that? No, I the thought they sm- were. Same. The small pink and white bumps on a person's tongue are not taste buds like many people seem to think. These are called papillae. Papillae? P-A-P-I-L-L-A-E. Uh-huh. I think that's right. Papillae. Little hairs. And they are, are little bumps. They house the taste buds, which cannot be seen by the naked eye. What? I always thought those bumps on our tongues were the taste buds. And you know how when one gets 100%. swollen and it hurts? And I'm like, you dang taste bud. It's not a taste bud. It's just the taste bud housey. That's so it's where the, weird. It's where the taste bud lives. <laughs> oh, I um, like that. There are taste buds. I'm start charging <laughs> rent. You should. <laughs> you should because there's something like 200,000 of them. Can you imagine? We'd be so rich. There are taste buds all over the tongue. All parts of a person's tongue are capable of tasting a wide range of things. There are charts that divide the tongue into different areas that only that only tastes uh, sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. But that is only done for the sake of simplicity. In reality, every part of the tongue is capable of detecting different tastes. So there you go. It's also one I'm of evicting the, strongest. the sour and the bitter. Yeah, I used to try that when I was a kid, and I would put food on different sides and see if I could tell the difference. You can. Uh huh. You can also. I think we all know it's the largest, this like one of the strongest muscles in your body is your tongue. Mm. I did Which not may, know that. Yeah, it's a good tool. So, like, if you ever get stuck in a in a what are those things called where snow piles on you? What's that word? Avalanche. <laughs> Yeah, you can dig your lick way out. My way tongue. out. Not lick, dig. It's a muscle. Oh my Reminds God. me. Remember when we talked about that guy that um, he got buried in an avalanche and he thought he was going to die, and then he remembered seeing his uh, sled dogs. Oh boy, here we come back to poo poo. Anyway, he had to poo poo. He let it freeze, and he dug himself out with a poo poo chisel. You're welcome. We'll be back again. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please come back. We don't always talk about poo-poo. Jessica, I love no. you. <laughs> I love you, too. Thanks for being crazy with me. Always. A never not crazy. We'll be back, guys. Love you. Bye. Oh, my God. <laughs>